Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom, and we're in beautiful Big Sur, California. It is just gorgeous today. The Lord answered our prayers because a few days ago it was really cold and cloudy and foggy. It was beautiful. You're going to get to see those shows too. But we pray that the Lord would give us some beautiful sunshine and shine His light on us so Come that on. you could see the beauty of His creation. Yeah. And we have just been in awe this week. He, our Creator, is magnificent. We are in awe of His creation, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are, my love. <laughs> and, you know, we just want to encourage you today. The reason why we're here, this show is for you, is to set you on your road to freedom. You know, John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said, If you will continue in my word, then you truly are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So the more that we continue in the Word, either by watching shows like you are today or listening to the Word in your car while you're running errands around the house, yeah. the more we continue in the Word, the freer we get. So we are all on that road to freedom, including us today. Yes. And we're getting freer every day. Amen. So today we wanted to talk to you about living with an internal perspective, which sets you free from the cares of this life. When you realize that you are living for eternity, for eternal reward, you know, there are so many times, the reason why I was really prompted to encourage you in this area a few weeks ago, because we were dealing with some challenges like, like everybody does. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, you will have trials, but be of good cheer. You can actually be happy in the midst of the trial you're facing right now yeah. because Jesus said, I have overcome the world oh, and you, I have Jesus. deprived it of the power to harm you. So uh, no evil can befall you. But when you serve Jesus, when you believe in him, you overcome. And so but I was thinking about these trials and challenges and it was just the fight of faith. And I was reminded what we are fighting for right now we're going to receive eternal reward. So this is worth it. Forever you know, it, reward. It just made everything, it put everything in perspective. When you think in regards to eternity, then this is easy. This is light. What God requires of us, it yeah. is never too difficult. That's it's never right. too hard. That's right. Because He gives us His grace to do His will. But we need to remember what, what we've answered the call for. When we do the Word, we're going to receive eternal reward. Mm -hmm. It is worth it. Amen. It makes it all worth it, doesn't it, honey? It does, baby. You know, I, the way I like to put it is, today's the first day of forever. That's right. And most mm -hmm. of the problems, I mean, I read in the newspaper last week about a young man who's he was 14, his girlfriend broke up with him. He went and got a gun, went to school, killed her, killed a few friends. They were people that he knew at school and then killed himself. Wow. 
I mean, he freaked yeah. out because his girlfriend broke up with him and killed himself and decided, well, since I'm going to die, I'll just kill some other people. Wow. Whoever didn't do what I wanted him to do because he's freaked out over a girl broke up with him. Right. If he'd have got through that temporary problem yeah. when temporary. he was 16 or 18 or 20 or 30, mm -hmm. breaking up with your girlfriend at 14 is really not the end of the world mm -hmm. unless you think it is. <laughs> if you right. believe that, then... For this guy, it was. Mm -hmm. But when we as Christians that's live so with an eternal Perspective. view yeah, that's of right. things, today is just the first day of forever. Yeah. The past, praise God, I'm not limited by the past. I did a, a basically an autobiography to let you know all the dumb stuff I did and, and how the devil got a shot at me because of my bad choices and decisions. You know, when you're living with an eternal perspective, the Bible says, forget the past, learn from it. Right. You know, we don't want to do the same mistakes mm -hmm. twice. We realize what not to do. The wages of sin is death. My goodness, you do not want death in your life. So you want to get that sin repented of and get it out of your life. It's like erasing it off the chalkboard, you know, so that it doesn't affect your future. That's what happens when you put it under the blood of the Lamb and you put it in the past and you forget the past, which is not a suggestion, by the way. It's what God commanded mm -hmm. us as Christians to do. Yes. So when when we put the past in the past and today is the beginning, what do we want our future to be like? Because you're either putting out fires all around you because of past decisions. And by the way, some of those past decisions weren't made by you. If you were raised in poverty and lack, somewhere in generations past, somebody robbed God. Somebody wasn't a tither. Mm. Somebody did not believe that you could prosper by doing things God. God said, if you give, you will receive, but somebody in my past didn't believe that, so I was raised in extreme poverty. It doesn't matter who's mm -hmm. to blame. All that matters is can we fix it? And yeah. the good news is yes. yes. Praise God. His word and his promises, over 7,000, God gave us over 7,000 promises in the Bible, and the answer to every one of those problems, if you say to God, God, will you heal my body? The answer is yes, yes. and amen. <laughs> yeah. Will you forgive me of my sins? Yes. yes. God's never said no to anybody. Yeah, that's good. God, will you help me? I made some mistakes in my marriage. Will you heal uh, this situation and let me start over and forgive me? Without a doubt, yes. Now, that doesn't mean everybody will do it, but that means God will. Mm -hmm. You do understand that. We as Christians don't have authority. We have authority over the devil, but not over each other. Mm -hmm. I can't make my wife do anything. Husbands, if you think you can make your wife do anything, you're deceived. Mm -hmm. What we can do, though, is be good husbands mm -hmm. and, and then our wives and lead, lead in paths of righteousness. Mm -hmm. What we can do is cover them in prayer and love on them and encourage and mm -hmm. build them up and, and exhort and, 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 uh, and bless them. And then they will, uh, just like giving, you will receive. When you, God is not mocked, the Bible says, whatever man sows, that will he also receive. And this is just so important because husbands and wives, when Mylon and I choose to do things God's way um, concerning holy matrimony, and you can find those instructions in First Peter, you can find them in Ephesians 5. When you look at those instructions for the marriage, when you choose to obey, your obedience every time receives, you will receive eternal reward. You're gonna receive blessing in this life. Sure, you're gonna enjoy holy matrimony, but when you choose to obey God, there's always eternal reward in store for you. God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I'll be at the sink washing the dishes and thinking, wow, is there any more I can be doing for you? Lord, surely there's more. And the Lord will just prompt me and say, your labor in me is never in vain. Whatever I've called you to for that moment, if you're being a wife, if you're being a mother, if you're being a career woman, if you're being a minister, your labor when you've answered the call for God's purpose and plan for you, your labor in Him is never in vain. You will always receive re reward for even the things that you think are little things. Yeah. God said, if you're faithful in the little, I'll make you a ruler over exactly, much. Buddy. So when He reminded me, there's a reward in store for you so you can wash those dishes with joy. You can clean the house with 
with joy. You could do the laundry with joy. Now, let me let me straighten something out right here. Uh -huh. I wash the dishes. Oh, that's right. Hey, he come on, somebody. <laughs> come on that's now. Right. We take turns. Mm -hmm. She is my helpmate. She does help me with everything mm -hmm. that's important to me in life. If I ask for help, she helps me. Here's what's cool about uh, God making me her helpmate, because I am her helpmate, I'm anointed to help her. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about, I mean, I, I've heard preachers say, well, I just love to walk in the anointing and maybe they're prophesying or they're laying hands on the sick. There's a lot of ways that you can be sure, anointed. But of one of the ways that I'm anointed is yeah. to help God's daughter yeah, to enjoy doing her father's will. Amen. And when I get to do that, man, I love to be anointed. I love it. If I do something as simple as taking her to some store because she wants to try on shoes or shirts or something, man, I found that if I'll do that with a good attitude right. that I'm sowing you and see. that I get to reap yeah. amazing rewards mm -hmm. as a husband. Everybody wants their wife to love them. Well, so. Mm -hmm. Sow some love. Yeah, that's good. You want your wife to be patient with you? You want her to go fishing with you or go whatever, I don't know, do something that she doesn't want to do? Then do some things that you don't want to do and do them with a good, don't do them griping and fussing. Do them with a good attitude and sow some patience and some kindness and some care and letting her know you're more right. important to me mm -hmm. than my wishes are. Right. And you will start reaping some eternal rewards, yeah, praise that's God. Right. That's the truth. Well, today we're coming to you from this magnificent winter wonderland right here in Colorado. I just want to talk to you for just a second about this thing we call Team Mountain. It's about partnership. It's about a covenant that God told us that, you know, basically the bottom line is we need each other. I, I bring my part of uh, the ministry and you bring your part of the spirit or your measure of the spirit. Christy brings hers. Yeah. Of course, God does his part. And we get the job done together yeah. as a group of people. Your influence reaches beyond your family, beyond your place of business, beyond your church. And you reach out through this ministry as a part of Team Island. Yeah. And we accomplish something that's greater than any of us Amen. together. Amen. And the Bible says that when somebody gets born again, everybody who had a part in that mm -hmm. gets the equal share of the reward when we get to heaven. Yeah. Yeah, that reward's going to be great. Mm -hmm. There is a crown of life. Yeah, wow. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. There is a crown. There's a soul winner's crown in heaven. Man, yeah. I mean, there's we, we don't even know what all's in heaven, but I, I'm going to be a part of that by the grace of God, and you are too. Yeah. So if you desire to be a part of that and, and help us to, to go into all the world, we're trying to reach people who don't normally watch Christian TV. We're trying to make it uh, fun. And I mean, all Christian TV is good, but we're trying to do it in a little different way. And if you approve of that, if you believe that's an important thing to do, yeah. to try to really reach out to the unsaved and the unchurched. If you want to join Team Mylan, you just go to mylan.org and click on Team Mylan. We'll be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. And we'll be praying for you every day. Mm -hmm. When you become my partner, remember I become yours. Yeah, that's and right. every day, we do not go to sleep at night without praying for our partner. Yeah, every mm -hmm. single day, we lift you up, your finances, your health, your yeah. children, your life. We're yeah. believing God yeah, with you. We keep you. our faith active Amen. in your life. That's good. And that's what we're mm -hmm. asking you to do with us. If you want to be a part of that, check it out. And I will see you somewhere out there on the road. You come find us at a <laughs> church near you, and I'll see you on the road to freedom. God Amen. bless you. Now, God is a spirit, and we are created in His image. We are spirits. We live in bodies. We have a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotion. But this body is going to die. When we get to heaven, we get a new body, but if your spirit doesn't die. Your spirit, all spirits don't go to the same address. All, everybody doesn't go to heaven. Some people go to hell. But everybody lives forever. Mm, that's right. Every spirit that's a good point. Yeah. is created in the image of God, who is mm. the same yesterday and forever. He, he is eternal. So 
And when you understand that you are too, you are a spirit created by God. You live in that body. Now, if you are a Christian, you're going to get a heavenly body. The Bible says when you get to heaven, I'm trading this baby in. I got some miles on this unit. I'm trading it in for a new uh, skinny body with some, some, you know, a six pack of abs and all that, you know. This supernatural body, oh my goodness. It's amazing what's, what's in store for us. Now, God is love, so everything in the future of a Christian or a believer, yes. somebody who trusts God enough to do things His way, heaven is a wonderful place because, first of all, it's filled with God who is love, right. and it's, it's filled with everything that love creates. Yeah. In other words, the people who are in heaven are going to be the ones who loved you, who loved God enough to love his people mm -hmm. on earth. Heaven's going to be filled with, with all the magnificent stuff. Who doesn't want to be loved? Yeah. On the other hand, to ignore Jesus sends you to a place where there is no love, where there is nothing but hate. Oh my goodness, you don't want to spend eternity with not just the devil, but with those people. I wouldn't even want to be in their neighborhood. Romans 1 and 20 says, For since the creation of the world, yes. His, meaning God's invisible attributes, His, His eternal. eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. That's why we bring you to these places. Yes. That's why we don't take you to a studio where there's just walls and TV cameras and everything. We try to take you out and, and find beautiful, beautiful places and yeah. all around the world. And we plan to do that until Jesus comes. Amen. But we, we do that so that they are without excuse, it says in the NASB. Well, nobody has an excuse. If you look at this magnificent view of the ocean and, and these trees and these flowers that grow... Yeah. I mean, in the last few days, yeah. we just been walking around mm -hmm. uh, taking pictures of some flowers yeah. that grow wild. Oh, Nobody could have created this God. but me. Yeah. How could you not know that there, there is, is a God? A God. Yeah. It didn't just happen. You want to share that uh, in Genesis, my love? Genesis 1-2, he says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Psalm 115-16 says, Even the heavens are the Lord's. Yeah. But the earth he has given to the children of men. Now, the reason why we're giving you several scriptures again always is because we want you to always join your faith with the word, not our opinion. Right. A, man, a man's opinion is not going to change your life. It's no only the truth of God's word that yes. will stand. And the word of God should always be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So we always try to give you two or three references for everything we're teaching you. Revelation 118 says, Jesus, who is the ever living one, I am living in the eternity of the eternities. I died, but see, I am alive forevermore. Mm. And I possess the keys of death and hell. Now this is important because there is a heaven and there is a hell. That's right. And nobody likes to talk about it. It's not even fun for us to talk about. We don't emphasize it because we, we ain't going there. We don't right. spend much time <laughs> thinking right. about it, but you definitely want to avoid it. It right. is a real place. It is a real and place. And even though Hollywood and the movies and TV shows act like everybody that dies goes to heaven, they don't. Mm. Just because somebody's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and they say now they're in the, the heavenly Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, phooey. They could be burning in hell, and you don't want to go there. That is a horrible place for horrible people. Yes. Well, Isaiah 14, verse 12 says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Lucifer was... Uh, a, a great leader in heaven, but he was thrown out of heaven. Yeah. He was the head of all worship. Mm. I mean, he was beautiful. God made him. He was an angel. He's created beautifully. And he was powerful, but he, he got proud and that got him thrown. That was original sin. Yes. Pride. Pride. Got him thrown out of heaven. That's why it's so dangerous. Pride goes before a fall. Not sometimes, every time. When you get my age and you look back over, the, it, was a, it was really good therapy for me to write my life story mm -hmm. because I had to look at 70, almost 74 years now 
And as I looked at it up close, it was real obvious as I remembered what was going on in my life, how that pride 100% of the time went before the bad things that happened in my yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Every time I got the arrogant and started running and gunning, and, hey, I got this, no problem, dude. I'm, you know, that attitude got me in trouble 100% of the time. That's why God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the yeah. humble. But here's the good news. This is what this scripture is about to tell you. There is a hell, but this is what Jesus did for you. Go ahead, baby. Colossians 2.15. Um, it says, God disarmed the principalities and powers hoo, hoo, that were hoo, ranged hoo. against us. That's it. That's what we want to emphasize. <laughs> and God made a bold display in a public example Come on, Jesus. of the devil, of the enemy, of the demons. He made a public example of them in triumphing over them in him, in Jesus, and in it, the cross. So the devil is defeated. Praise the God. Bible says Jesus paraded mm -hmm. the devil and all of his angels, the demons, yeah. as defeated, defeated foes, foes. Yeah. gone before all <laughs> the angels and, said, and showed them. In fact, the Bible says you're going to see one of these days when we get to heaven, we'll look at the devil and say, what? This is the guy that caused yeah. all that problem. That's true. That's oh, my goodness. Says. Only That's because true. people were afraid of him. Now, if we choose Jesus, that's, right. that's the difference in heaven and hell. That's and that's right. the only that's difference. It. That's it. A lot of people think Jesus may. We just pray a lot and then God makes a decision. No, he doesn't. The Bible says you choose. You choose. You choose this day. Mm -hmm. I've set before you life and death. This is Deuteronomy 30, 19. I've set before you the word of God. Yeah. Moses said as he read the word to the Israel. And he said, now choose life or choose death, but it, choose life that you and your descendants may live. live. Now, Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise God. That's the choice Thank we you. can receive mm -hmm. Christ. And here's why. John 3, 16, you know it. For God, God so, so loved, loved the, the world, world. Yeah. that he gave his only begotten son that yes. whosoever might believe on him should, should not, not perish, perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life, life in the presence of God. Yes. Thank you, Victory. Lord over death. Glory to God. Just we by being victory. born, not of your the flesh of your mom and dad, yes. but born of a choice by faith in Jesus yeah. to live forever. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, baby. Will you read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51? So these are the next three things we're going to discuss with you is what you receive when you choose Jesus. Number yeah. one, you get victory over death. Come on. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 57. This is a passage. I'm just going to read the highlights to you. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, this is about mm -hmm. the rapture when Jesus Come comes on. again for the church. We, we shall be changed in a moment in the, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible Whew. and we shall all be changed. Hallelujah. And death is swallowed up Thank in you, victory. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So thanks be to God who gives, gives us, us the, the victory, victory through our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. That's it. Come on, somebody. The second one of, is authority over the authority. enemy. Yeah, that's it. The second thing that God gives us. Luke 10, 17 says, Then the 70 returned with joy, yes. saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Yes. And he, Jesus, said to them, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. Mm -hmm. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on servants and yeah. scorpions Ooh. and over all, oh, that's get idea. this people, mm -hmm. please understand this. Please, mm -hmm. my precious brother and sister, we don't want to just preach at you, man. Mm -hmm. We're trying to impart into your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. Jesus, this is the son of God talking here. He said, I give you authority. Yes. If you're my disciple, I give you authority mm -hmm. to trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing. shall by any means hurt, hurt you. you. That's right. Now, if you believe That's that, good. man, you're in the secret. You're, you're in the safe place. Mm -hmm. You're in the safe, warm place. You're in what the Bible calls you wealthy place. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice yes. because your names are written in heaven now or in again, the book of life. Yes. See, again, Jesus goes back to, now this is a good thing. You have power. You have authority over the devil, so you can live a victorious life here. But this is where you should rejoice 
Your name is written in heaven. You have eternity with me. Again, Jesus is bringing them back to an eternal perspective, living with eternity in mind. Amen. You're going to live forever with me and receive eternal reward. That's so good. Amen. Amen. In Matthew 16, 13 through 19, Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. When you receive him, you get the keys to a victorious life. And here they are. When Jesus came to the region of Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living mm, God. Amen. I recognize you as yeah. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, nope. but my Father who is in heaven. It came by the Spirit of God. It came by supernatural revelation. And I also say to you, Peter, on this rock, now he was talking about the rock of this revelation. When you, relate, when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He is Lord of Lords, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. So now listen, this, this is, is important. Some people and possibly a billion of them believed that Peter was the only one that could bind and loose. That's right. not true. That's good. The revelation was given to anybody that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. That's what the kingdom was built on, yes. not on a man. It wasn't built on Peter. Yeah. You can build a church around Peter, and mm -hmm. Peter was a good man. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ, but he wasn't the Son of God. Right. The church is built on Jesus Christ yes. and it's built on the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation. And that revelation includes the keys to the kingdom. And what are those keys? Whatever you bind yes. on earth, you whatever disallow. you lose. Yes. If you yeah. bind the devil, then he's bound. Yeah. At your house, mm -hmm. if you bind the spirit of fear out of your life or the spirit of infirmity, right. I mean, what you, but what if you put up with it, it's not God's fault. Mm -hmm. If you refuse to, to use the keys yeah. and you just stand outside the house, when the house, when God's trying to give you the mansion and you stand outside saying, I can't get in, but the key's in your pocket, you yeah. can't blame that on God. Yeah. God has given you the keys, the keys to the kingdom of God. Yeah. Use the keys. Yeah, yeah. Take authority over what you know is not from God and bind it in Jesus' name. Yeah. And if there's something that you need to loose or somebody that you yeah. need to set free, yeah. praise God. Loose whatever you loose on earth will yes. be loosed or you can loose what is loosed in heaven, basically. Yeah. Jesus didn't talk about going to heaven a lot. What he did say was, here's how you should pray, that it would be on earth, earth. as it is in heaven. Yeah. He talked about bringing heaven down here. Yeah, that's good. And we're talking about eternal perspective. Yeah. Today is the first day of forever. Yeah. I believe that you're going to make the choice today I do too. to bind that that needs to be bound at your house and to loose that that needs to be loosed. Go to Milan.org. There's all kind of information where we can help you. That's yes. all we do every day. We study the Bible and we try to make it easy and fun to study and to understand so that you can enjoy walking in it and enjoy receiving God's best. Stay in the Word because that will keep you on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom.